Daniel 7, 1b, the second part. Now that we have come to the final chapter of Aramaic Daniel, chapter 7, I'd like to take a look at this manuscript. This is the Erfurt Codex inscribed in the 14th century. And as we zoom in on the page of Daniel 7, we can take a look at Daniel 7, 1. We don't have any problem reading the consonants here, but what are those symbols that surround the consonants? Let me illustrate with this image. This would be what Daniel 7, 1 would look like in the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia. I'm going to remove the Masoretic accent marks so that all that is left is the vowels, dagishes, mapik, those kind of markings. And now I'm going to transition to the system we see of marking in the Erfurt Codex. This is the Babylonian system of vowel pointing. This system had been forgotten with the widespread adoption of the Tiberian vocalization that we're accustomed to for Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. However, it is significant for Aramaic studies in more than one way. One way, of course, is being able to do textual criticism of manuscripts that use Babylonian pointing, but also because Targum Onkelos, its oldest manuscripts, of the translation of the Torah into Aramaic use Babylonian pointing rather than Tiberian pointing. So in order to read those oldest manuscripts, we need to be familiar with Babylonian pointing. Paul Kala did a great service to scholarship in doing an analysis of the Erfurt Codex for his dissertation. For our purposes, we can get an overview of Babylonian vocalization with Jeffrey Kahn's article in the Encyclopedia of Hebrew Language and Linguistics there's also a good overview in Science Badios' A History of the Hebrew Language, as well as Gar and Fassberg's edited volume on A Handbook of Biblical Hebrew. For now, let's go back to Daniel 7.